Victoria Railway Station. Every day, 44,000 passengers pass through here, mostly in the rush hour, when the trains are packed with commuters. It was just after 9 o'clock one morning in March when an accident happened to a train that was due in here shortly before 10. It's an accident that can only really be described as a freak of nature and led to one of the most difficult rescues we've ever shown. Our reconstruction focuses on the one man who was trapped in that accident and includes some remarkable video footage shot by the Surrey Fire Brigade. Reg Steer, played here by an actor, was catching the 848 from East Grinstead. He was going to London for an important meeting. Also on the train that morning was Ian Hudson. I work in London and uh, the, the train journey to London I've been doing for the last 10 years on and off. Um, starts at East Grinstead any time from 8 o'clock through to half past 9 depending upon what's happening on that day. I was in the front compartment in the front set of seats. Reg was one or two rows of seats behind me, also facing forward. As we rounded the last bend towards Dorman's Land Station, the driver hit the brakes very hard. And the next thing was that there was an almighty crash on the left-hand side uh, as the tree came in. Subsequently, we learnt that the tree had toppled down the embankment and had actually struck the front of the train. And that had pivoted the tree, if you like, and forced the root end of the tree through the side of the carriage. And at that point, the, the devastation in the carriage was enormous. The tree came in literally immediately on my left. If I had been sitting on the left-hand set of seats, I would have gone out of the carriage with it. Reg had been swept back by the tree, so his situation was that he was pinned underneath the tree in his seat, but the seat had been ripped off of its mountings. The emergency services had been called almost immediately, but the closest they could get their vehicles was Dorman Station, half a mile along the track. They didn't know what they might find, so they had to take all the equipment they were able to carry. This guy had survived the most awful impact. All the, the, the seats from the middle of the carriage had been scraped back through the carriage and piled up around him. How he, he survived it, I don't know. He shouldn't have done. Hello, chap. Has he been unconscious? No. What about does it hurt? You can't feel your legs. You can't feel your legs. Right, what about your arms? I was able to dress his wounds and to make him comfortable as I could with uh, blanketing to keep him warm. I can't get down to his legs. Can you help me? My big worry, is, as always, is what you can't see. His legs could have been severely crushed. Um, he could feel nothing, therefore he couldn't say that they were all right or they weren't. All he was aware of was, in his words, I believe at one point, he said they were numb. Um, if somebody says they're numb, it's a pretty good suggestion that the blood has been stopped, therefore they are trapped. The fire brigade had to stop the tree doing any more damage, but it weighed more than three tonnes. Right, Reg, we're going to have to stabilise the tree. Nothing at all for you to worry about. Start winching! Any uncontrolled movement of the tree trunk would not only have worsened Reg's injuries, but may well have jeopardised the safety of the rescue teams. So, using a portable winch, we secured one end of the winch to the tree, uh, the other to the tree on the embankment, and took up the tension. Our main concern was the fact that Reg was trapped underneath the tree. Uh, and we were extremely concerned of the weight on the tree actually causing physical damage to Reg. 
he was underneath the tree, could see very little of him except his chest and part of his legs. Uh, and we knew he had quite a, quite a long jaw on our hands to actually get him out. Uh, so we decided the, the most appropriate line to follow initially was to take the weight of the tree from, from Reggie's knees. <coughs> the ambulance chap advised us that, that um, he thought that uh, there was a part of a piece of metal actually impacted into the top of Reggie's leg, uh, which worried us a little more, because I say that the weight of the tree on it and the weight of the tree on the metal into his, into his body could be causing quite severe internal bleeding, uh, and that was a concern. OK, let's see if we can have a look. When I came across this piece of, of metal that was protruding into his stomach, I felt that it probably was penetrating and therefore it was potentially a very serious situation. It became very obvious that we could not proceed with just lifting the tree. There was too much danger that if the man was impaled, it would do much, much more damage. And after some quick thinking, we decided that the most easy way, and probably the safest way, was to cut the seat from under, under Reg. He'd now been trapped for nearly two hours. We'd managed to cut some of the seat away uh, with an air cutting saw, uh, and Reg's seat dropped three or four inches, very gently, we didn't let it drop suddenly. The position that the metal was in was approximately over the femoral artery, which is the main vessel to the leg. If you damage that, there is a great risk that you will perish. And we started moving some of the debris from around the seat and his legs. Uh, one of our lads discovered a briefcase sitting on his lap, uh, and to a degree it probably cushioned some of the blow, I would imagine. It was really a relief when Reg finally dropped away that the piece of metal was not indeed inside him. He'd got a lovely mark across his stomach, but he'd got no skin abrasion whatsoever. I was very relieved for Reg's sake. So at that stage, it was most quite obvious that the, the easiest thing to do was to slide him onto the stretcher and then, of course, gently take him down to the ground. They worked on him, the ambulance they worked on him a little bit more, uh, wrapped him up and took him away. Reg was taken to the East Surrey Hospital, but then transferred to a specialist unit where he was treated for facial injuries. His legs and the rest of his body were completely unharmed. The briefcase had obviously played a great part in protecting Reggie's legs, and that I'm convinced. I think Reggie's a very lucky man to be alive. The tree should have got him, the bits and pieces in the carriage should have got him. He's a very fortunate man. Today, Reg has made a full recovery, and he still catches the train. I normally drive to work, but on that day, I travelled for the first time on the train from East Grinstead to Victoria. I had no idea at the time quite what had happened to me. I thought the tree had actually fallen through the roof of the train. And it was only later that I'd learned it actually speared the side of the carriage. I think the briefcase probably saved my life that day because putting it on my lap when the seat wrapped round, it took the impact of that seat and perhaps... Some would expect anything dramatic to happen. But on a bitterly cold January day, it was devastated 